live from Las Vegas. This is 13 Action News. Good morning, Las Vegas. No right, now, oh, right now, police killed a wrong man in Alabama and his family demanding justice after the ball shooting. New developments in the Brexit deal where world leaders have decided as they meet with the British Prime Minister in Brussels. Again, our Golden Knights on a roll right now. Why their third win in a row last night is extra special for the team and for a local boy. Good morning, Las Vegas. I'm Tom George. And I'm meteorologist Gina Cancellari. What a great day we have. We, ha we have a great day in store. We have yeah. a great day, weather-wise and otherwise. We keep singing over here, and so why stop now? I can sing into the weather. Here we are. ba ba bish ki ba ba Yes, we've been talking about the Lion King. All right, right now at McCarran International Airport, we have a nice breeze. It is light, but it is just strong enough to bring down some cooler air. Current temperature 50 degrees right now, and there it is, the direction of the wind coming from the north northeast, and it's cooler up there. So we have a cooler air moving into the valley as we head through the day today. Here's a look at the weather timeline starting off at noon, taking you through the afternoon. 58 degrees expected at noon with some clouds. And again, that breeze out of the northeast around 10 miles per hour. It's just enough to cause a chill in the air if you're not in the sunshine. Uh, as we head through 1 o'clock, 59 degrees, topping off the day right after 2, around 60 degrees. 3 o'clock, numbers start to drop down. So here's a look at some high temperatures where you live, what you can expect today. Rhodes Ranch, 57 degrees. Southern Highlands, 60 degrees with those clouds. Sunrise Manor, 59 degrees for high temperature there, and North Las Vegas, 59 degrees. We have some big changes on the way. It's in the seven-day forecast. We have the possibility of seeing some rain. I'll let you know on which day that happens coming up within the hour. Tom? Beautiful day, just Hakuna Matata, you know, right? Well, you're going to need some patience though looking at this one. This kind of looks like the 405 in LA, but that's actually the Interstate 15 down near Gene. It was shut down for a while yesterday because of a crash there. Well, things are back open now, and of course, it's a busy holiday weekend, so a lot of people are leaving Las Vegas right now. More than 300,000 people were in town for Thanksgiving. Well, a man is fighting for his life and his dog has died after they were hit by a car. This all happened yesterday near Charleston and Bruce. Two cars collided, one of them hitting the man and his dog who were both in the crosswalk. Metro police are calling this a freak accident. And people we talked with who walk along this stretch on Charleston say those drivers don't pay enough attention to the pedestrians in that area. I don't think you're going anywhere that's that important that someone needs to get hurt for. You know what I mean? Or break a law for it because I'm pretty sure if you're speedy you can get a ticket. I think it's just not a walkable friendly city period. Now Metro also says both drivers are cooperating with this investigation and they don't believe that they were impaired at the time of that crash. Well a manhunt is underway right now for the gunman who police say shot two people at an Alabama mall on Thanksgiving Day. Authorities now say the man who police killed because they thought that he was the suspect likely was not the one who fired those shots. Kim Hutcherson has more on the changing story and the growing calls for justice. No justice! No peace! A community banding together to demand answers after police in Alabama admitted the man they shot and killed was likely not the suspect who opened fire inside a shopping mall. We're here to represent all the black men that are walking around here in this mall who might have to say, I didn't do it. Authorities initially said 21-year-old Emantic Fitzgerald Bradford Jr. shot an 18-year-old man and a 12-year-old girl at River Chase Galleria Mall on Thanksgiving night. The gunfire sending shoppers running for their lives. According to police, Bradford was seen running away from the scene while brandishing a gun. That's when an officer shot and killed him. Now, investigators are changing their story, saying new evidence indicates Bradford did not fire the shots. He chose country first, not a bullet. Amen. And that's all I got to say, not a bullet. Now, investigators are looking for the actual gunman still on the run as the community demands justice. Where's the body cam footage? Why we ain't seen it yet? Why did they release any information, but yet they released no body cam footage? Now the power of people don't stop. I'm Kim Hutcherson reporting. Now the officer involved in the shooting has been placed on administrative leave as investigators look into that shooting. Meantime, the mall has been reopened. Well, McCarran Airport may soon be undergoing a name change. Governor-elect Steve Sisolak has asked management to look into possibly renaming the airport after retired Democratic Senator Harry Reid. Right now, of course, the airport is named after former Senator Pat McCarran. Sisolak and other lawmakers say McCarran left a legacy of anti-Semitism, xenophobia, and racism. 
Sisolak also wants to rename the Reno Airport after former Republican Governor Paul Laxalt. His grandson, Attorney General Adam Laxalt, supports that idea. Well, new this morning, the EU leaders have endorsed the Brexit withdrawal agreement. That's according to a tweet by European Council President Donald Tusk. He retweeted about half an hour after the EU leaders' summit started behind closed doors in Brussels. That agreement will lay out how the UK will formally leave the EU next March, but that agreement still has to go in front of the British Parliament to get a formal approval. All right, well, our Vegas Golden Knights celebrating a third straight win, the team beating the San Jose Sharks 6 to nothing. The game was a special one because the team also honored kids fighting cancer. They wore some special purple jerseys during their warm-ups that were uh, being auctioned off during the game for pediatric cancer organizations. And that includes 8-year-old Colin Magden. We first shared his story yesterday right here on Good Morning Las Vegas. He has leukemia, and he started his treatment this week. Well, now he's getting a special gift from his favorite Golden Knight, Jonathan Marcheseau. Colin says the support of his Vegas Junior Golden Knights teammates has meant a lot to him. They're really, really nice from what they all drew, drew and did. You always work hard and never give up. Good advice, work hard and never give up. And of course, because yesterday was a shutout, that also means free Krispy Kreme donuts for fans today. Thanks, Flurry. Well, Black Friday is over, so Cyber Monday might be your next best bet to try and snag some deals. But yesterday, it was all about shopping local. 13 Action News reporter Cynthia Maldonado went to the Container Park downtown, where shoppers were taking part in this special day. It's a breakfast sandwich with bacon. It has over our eggs, uh, cheese, Swiss cheese, bacon, potatoes, breakfast potatoes. It's a passion that started at home. Since I was little, my mom, mom taught us how to cook. She always would tell us, come here, help us. For Chef Araceli Perez, cooking meals at Downtown Terrace. We have chilaquiles, we have ceviche, we have different stuff that you guys could try. Is something she enjoys every day. I feel great, I feel great because a lot of customers leave from here wanting to come back. She says patronizing local restaurants keeps them going while making you feel at home. Local is more homemade. We have quality food. We love cooking. My cooks love cooking. We do it with a passion. The Blair family is visiting from Utah and they decided to support the locals. We want to eat something that you can only get in Vegas. You can go to IHOP anytime, but I can't come to this place anytime and I want all the different kinds of experiences that you can get. So remember to grab a bite at a shop that helps the little guys who compete every day against chain restaurants. Creates an emphasis on supporting those people that have put their entire life savings into giving us a really cool place to shop or eat. Reporting Cynthia Maldonado, 13 Action News. A lot of good restaurants downtown. Be sure and shop local for sure. Well, good morning, everyone. Well, coming up, we see them every holiday season, but those red kettles you see at near stores are apparently having a tough time this year. We're learning what could be the problem. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Gina Cancellari. We have some clouds and we have a breeze out of the north today. We looked at this earlier. I want to look at it again because it's going to be a cool Sunday. Then we have wet weather changes ahead of the work week. I've got your forecast coming up after the break. Well, as families and friends gather for the holidays and share food and drink, some people worry about their diets. Annie Taylor shows you how to enjoy an adult beverage without busting your diet. Well, there are a few drinks out there that health experts recommend if you're going to indulge. So if you're trying to cut down on the calories, shots are the way to go. Yes, shots. A shot of vodka, gin, rum, whiskey, or even tequila have an average of 97 calories. But if you're looking for something on the carbonated side, how about a glass of bubbly? One glass of champagne has about 84 calories. And if your poison of choice is wine, experts say go for the dry wine. That can be somewhere between 120 and 125 calories per glass. Reduced calorie wine, though, can run between 90 to 100 calories. And if you're going to go and grab a beer, well, your best bet is to go for the light beer, of course. That's about 100 calories per serving. But the key thing to avoid, the mixers, the tonic water, the juice, the soda, the syrups, you know, the good stuff, but avoid it. 
<laughs> Gina's distracted because our next guest, uh, some llamas are in the background, but uh, if you really Yeah, but I'll yeah. do some shots of coffee. Exactly, so, so uh, or some actual shots. I mean, did you hear that? It's yeah, I'm not a big diet. fan of shots though. I'm really not. It's uh, just too much. Yeah. And then I think that one song, you know, shot, shot, shot. Shot, shot. Yeah, right? I can't yeah. do that. But coffee, I can do. I'm a beer guy, but that's that's also high in calories. So uh, you got you to gotta like go to the gym to make up for it. All right, we can yeah. do that today. Today's yeah. a good day for that. It Today's is. a good day to be outside. Outside, actually. right? Yeah. Go for all right. A hike. So we have some nice weather. Let's discuss. Uh, we do have cool northerly breeze coming down, so that'll get us a little cooler today than we were yesterday, and a few clouds around today as well. Not a whole heck of a lot. It's not going to be overcast, but you'll see them floating by every once in a while, coming from the north pushing through and that's about it. All thanks to the northerly wind. The wind will be sustained about 10 miles per hour. Not that big of a deal, but it's out there and it's cool. It makes it feel cool outside. Here's a live look outside right now from the Mandalay Bay camera. Nice, nice picture there from the Valley View camera. Beautiful. Again, just a few high level clouds, sometimes a little deeper, thicker clouds. Because of that, we have some uh, stations reporting cloud cover. Las Vegas currently 50 degrees with some clouds there. Anthem 47 degrees. Southern Highlands 42 degrees. Summerlin reporting some clouds too. Calm conditions there, but elsewhere like Boulder City reporting the breeze right now out of the north at 16 miles per hour. And like I said, that breeze is going to stick around today. It'll disappear as we move through midweek. Starting off Monday, getting a little warmer there. The breeze is gone. Tuesday, getting a little warmer. Wednesday, getting a little warmer yet as a storm approaches. Here's a look at the future cast and it'll show you the storm approaching. Not today though. Here are the clouds that are going to be around today. The clouds are going to be around tonight as well. Same thing for Monday, same thing for Tuesday. Even on Wednesday, some clouds are going to start to move in and thicken up on Wednesday. That is before the storm moves through on Thursday. So here we are Wednesday, overnight Tuesday into Wednesday morning still some clouds around, then the storm pushes through on Thursday. So let's take our time, take a look at the seven day planner. Again, today cooler, cooler than yesterday. High temperature, just 60 degrees. Monday, Tuesday, benign. No big weather story here, should be pretty easy going. Then as we head into Wednesday, the wind will start to pick up as this storm approaches. It's a pretty decent sized storm, so I do think we will see some rain in the valley and some mountain snow as well with some windy conditions, maybe 20, 25 miles per hour gusting higher at times. High temperature on your Thursday, 61 degrees. Then the storm sort of moves through, lingering a little bit, a few clouds hanging around on Friday. High temperature then 58 degrees, and then Saturday we cool down even more. High temperature on Saturday, just 56 degrees. Overnight lows though stay in the 40s, but look at when Wednesday into Thursday, low temperature there, 49, so relatively warm before the storm gets here. Tom? All right, well, it happens on the road every day, close calls and crashes, but when it comes to finding out who's at fault, those witness accounts don't always add up. Well, now a Texas dash cam company created a new video putting bad drivers on blast and highlighting some of the worst caught on camera drivers. It's a compilation of videos from the company's customers who are both witnesses and victims. People do a lot to, uh, to, to get out of the responsibility of, of uh, you know, taking care of what their actions caused. According to the company, some drivers are hesitant, but that extra set of eyes could save you thousands down the road. All right, well, when Good Morning Las Vegas returns, Tuesday is your chance to give back. We'll let you know how with some furry friends right here in the studio. All right, well, welcome back. It's the season of giving. We heard a Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. Well, how about you wrap it up with Giving Tuesday? Joining me this morning is uh, Scott Fogo, the principal over at uh, Faith Lutheran, as well as uh, Haley and Emma and our, and our friends here, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So uh, first, I mean, we, we hear about all these these days. You got Black Friday, and now it's a Giving Tuesday. I mean, this is kind of a tradition you guys have. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, we think after the hecticness of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, we have the chance to actually give. The true meaning of Christmas is to give on on uh, on Tuesday. And uh, so kind of explain for people <laughs> where these guys come into the mix. Yeah, you could actually give a gift in somebody's name um, for Christmas. And so you could give like let's say a goat for $85, which could be life-saving for a family in Kenya or other developing countries. Um, a goat or a sheep or an alpaca can actually uh, give them a lot of income for long term to help their family out. Mm -hmm. 
So World Vision is a humanitarian organization, a Christian humanitarian organization that focuses on dealing with the injustices of poverty. And so through purchasing one of these animals, they will send out one of the animals to a family in need and it will help not only generate income, but help the problem of malnutrition there too. Mm -hmm. And so um, he, was, he was telling me you guys actually partnered with a certain um, town in, in Kenya? Yeah, so we uh, have a 10-year relationship working with World Vision to adopt two communities in Kenya, which we visited in September. Um, it's a really, really exciting idea. We're trying to really help them pull themselves out of poverty mm -hmm. over the next 10 years. So did you guys go down there? Yeah, we went down there in September for a week and just looked at all the projects they're doing to help that community. Um, they teach them to support themselves, so they're not just giving out free handouts, they actually train them and um, provide supplies so that they can actually support themselves. Yeah, and while we were there, we saw how important just one animal can be to a family and how it, how it really changes how they are. So maybe just a goat or a sheep, that's all they need to, to yeah. kind of get the jump start they need, right? Yeah, like a goat can provide milk <laughs> for like up to 10 years for the family and also provide um, like the offspring can be sold so they could uh, um, send their kids to school or provide uh, other leafy vegetables instead of, uh, instead of that stuff that's not as healthy for them. So even one goat, it can be really, really, really important. But the gifts uh, range from sixteen to $50,000. So $16 to $50,000. So you can have a backpack that provides school supplies for $25 and you can have, you can sponsor with the goat or you can use one of the handcrafted necklaces to send there too. So the prices range, but either way they still make an impact. Awesome. And then real quick, we got to <laughs> want to go over here and meet, meet these guys too. So you guys are, you guys are from right here in Vegas too, right? right yep. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's meet everybody here. Okay. So this is, um, this is the llama. Yes, this is the llama. This is uh, Harry Larry, the uh, baby alpaca. And Cusco is the llama. Yeah, yeah, Cusco, Cusco yes. the alpaca. Mm -hmm. And, and then, then uh, Snuggles. Snuggles, the little sheep. The little sheep yeah. And then down to the baby. Maybell. Maybell, the goat. Yeah, the yeah goat, so. Yeah. Got it, yeah, they got the whole squad here this morning. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and for a good cause too, um, we'll give you the details on how to donate. Thank you all for being here this morning, and we appreciate it. Thank Thanks. you. So much. All right, we'll see you guys after the break. Not much is going to top llamas, but this one will put a smile on your face too. A surprising bit of holiday cheer for one man. After losing his wallet, a good Samaritan returned it to him and more. Hunter Shemet lost it on his flight to Las Vegas for his sister's wedding. He had $60 in cash and a check for about $400 in it. So when he lost it, he certainly didn't expect to see that wallet or that money ever again until he received a package in the mail. It was his wallet, a letter, and even more money. I think that it goes to show that there's more good out there than there is evil because uh, th this was just a random guy on the street. It really just shows that there are still good people out there. And Hunter eventually tracked down that mystery man to thank him for his kindness. What a great story. Well, you know that sound that means holiday shopping season is here, right? Yeah, the iconic sound of that Salvation Army bell is more than 100 years old. Volunteers dressed in red ringing those bells next to those coin collecting kettles, just about as iconic as holiday sales this time of year. But the largest nonprofit fundraising campaign in the nation just isn't taking in what it used to anymore. The parent organization hasn't exactly pegged a cause for that, but the bell ringers think they know why. Even a lot of people walk by saying, you know, I don't carry cash anymore. Problem. Yeah, it's a problem for us, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't carry cash either usually, so yeah, the Salvation Army has tried credit card readers in the past, but people didn't use them. So now bell ringers are handing out cards with a website for people who don't have the cash, but who still want to donate. Well, good morning, Las Vegas. Still ahead this morning, a shocking discovery inside a church with police found inside that led to the arrests of multiple people. Plus, helping the homeless is the season of giving. Metro Police say you need to be smart about it. The warning they have for you during the holiday season. If you're watching Good Morning Las Vegas. Join us for our next half hour. We'll be right back. Now, live from Las Vegas, this is 13 Action News. Good Morning Las Vegas. So right now, a lawsuit could be on the horizon. Firms now getting together with wildfire victims in California, pointing the finger of blame. The battle over the border continues as thousands of migrants wait and wonder what's going to happen next. The U.S. and Mexico doing it out over who's responsible. Plus, a rise in gun mishap, some questioning 
whether we really need federal air marshals protecting the skies. Good morning, Las Vegas. I'm Tom George. But first, we want to kick things off with 13 First Alert meteorologist Gina Cancellari. Good morning, Gina. Tom, good morning. We have a nice breeze out there this morning coming from the north, keeping us a little cooler than yesterday. Current temperature at McCarran International Airport, 50 degrees, and there is the wind coming out of the north, northeast at about 9 miles per hour, and that's going to persist throughout the day today here in Las Vegas. One of the biggest travel days of the year, it's here, so let's take a look at any weather and cities you might be going to. Right now, Seattle, it is raining. You might have a delay there and Chicago, the Midwest. There is a storm moving through that region, although at the moment there are no flight delays popping up on this map, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were some delays across the Great Lakes regions, across the Midwest and even the Pacific Northwest. So here you see the map. Make sure you call ahead or check your app, whatever you need to do before you head to the airport, because you might have delays if you're heading to those areas of the country. If you are staying here, though, it's nice. Centennial Hills, high temperature today, 60 degrees, Summerlin, 55 degrees with a few clouds. That'll be for the whole region until we get the opportunity for wet weather. That happens in the seven day forecast. I will show that to you coming up. Tom. Sounds good. Thanks, Gina. Well, new developments now in the California wildfires. Lawyers now trying to convince families who've lost their homes to join in on a lawsuit against a utility provider that they think is responsible. All of this unfolding in Southern California, where the Woolsey fire has burned nearly 100,000 acres and killed three people. Now, it's important to note that there's been no official cause given for the fire yet, but several lawyers in the area are banding together to sue Southern California Edison. They say that the utility's equipment is what sparked those flames that would eventually become the Woolsey fire. This is a fire that started 30 miles away from our home, and it took our home in less than two days from its starting. Something has to be done. Now, fire investigators haven't provided any hints to how the Woolsey fire started. This lawsuit could even take two years to even reach a jury. Well, both Mexico and the United States are trying to figure out what to do with those thousands of people waiting to get into the U.S. The incoming Mexican government saying there is no deal yet to host the asylum seekers and the mayor of Tijuana now asking for help from the United Nations. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has the latest. A humanitarian crisis is mounting on the U.S.-Mexico border, according to the mayor of Tijuana, as nearly 5,000 Central American migrants continue arriving in his city. Officials and volunteers are helping the migrants, but the mayor of Tijuana refuses to deplete his city's public resources and is asking the United Nations for aid. A group calling themselves Border Angels has teamed up with other organizations across Southern California to help those migrants. We've been there before. But this is the first time we do the Caravan of Love. The so-called Caravan of Love will bring supplies such as non-perishable food, blankets, and toiletries. These people are escaping a very difficult situation in their home country. Many of those migrants fleeing violence or poverty in Honduras may be spending months in Tijuana. The president has already threatened to shut down the U.S. border. We will close entry into the country for a period of time until we can get it under control. The, entire border, we the whole border. I mean the whole border. He also says he's granted the military increased authority. They have to. They're going to use lethal force. I've, I've given the okay. Yeah, they have to. I hope they don't have to. But Defense Secretary James Mattis insists U.S. troops are just there to back up Border Patrol agents and will likely be armed with plastic shields and batons, not guns. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. Turning now to Paris, where at least 35 people have been arrested after tense protests there. They're protesting rising fuel prices and the policies of French President Emmanuel Macron. The demonstrators set cars, trucks and tires on fire yesterday and last weekend. These are some images right there near, near the Champs Elysees. Police have also been using tear gas and water cannons to try and control those crowds. Back home in Florida now terror for shoppers at a Walmart when a woman is shot and killed in the middle of the store. Police saying the suspect and the victim were arguing in the store's garden area. That's when they say the woman went to another part of the store and was yelling for help. That suspect followed her and then shot her and took off. He was arrested not long after that with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He is not expected to survive. The White House is asking the Supreme Court to approve banning most transgender service members from the military. District courts across the country have so far blocked it from going into effect. That policy specifies that individuals without a special gender condition can only serve according to the sex that they were assigned with at birth. Well, more than 100 gambling machines have been found inside a church in Houston. Firefighters made that discovery after responding to reports of a fire at the church Friday night. 
Harris County Sheriff's deputies were called to the scene and several people were led out of the building in handcuffs. Pastor Anthony Scott says his church has nothing to do with that incident. What happened here last night is completely separate from the Word of Life Church. Uh, there are two different entities that are in this church separated by this wall and a wrought iron fence, which is outside, and we have no access over there. Yeah, easy to remember. It's illegal in other places besides Vegas, but officials there are now looking into how all those gambling machines got there in the first place. Well, the spirit of the holiday season is now kicking into high gear, and for all of you who want to give this year, Metro has a warning for you. More than 16,000 people are considered homeless in Las Vegas. And the cost of cleanup, hospital visits, and the demands on police and paramedic units is costing more than $48 million a year. Yeah, those numbers certainly alarming. And in this public service announcement, Metro is addressing the homeless crisis and the need for change. They want you to resist giving out money on the streets. But handouts and spare change don't result in meaningful change. This holiday season, donate responsibly to charities that are making a real difference. And there are many ways you can give. Metro has a complete list of credible charities that you can give to at MeaningfulChangeLV.com. Well, new numbers show a rise in gun mishaps by federal air marshals. A CNN investigation shows a pattern which sparked a call for a review of the program and questions about whether we really need air marshals. Chris Welch breaks it all down. You might remember the shocking incident from last year when a passenger found an air marshal's loaded service weapon in the plane's bathroom. Turns out that may not have been just an isolated incident. According to a CNN investigation, TSA's Office of Inspection has documented more than 200 cases of air marshals allegedly misusing or misbehaving with their weapons between 2005 and 2017. 19 of those cases involve marshals accidentally firing their weapons, and over 70 involve lost or misplaced weapons, including some left in airplane bathrooms, others inside airports and at least 13 involved alcohol. I would always understand that there's going to be a few incidents just because that's the noise of the system. That's just life. That's just the way it works. But but this many incidents, particularly how many of them are related to alcohol, uh, that, that's a serious concern and there's some underlying problems there that need to be addressed. Jeff Price wrote a book on aviation security and believes the program does work as a deterrent but he says now an overhaul of the air marshal program may be needed. So I think it's definitely time for a stem to stern review of the entire air marshal program. I'm not advocating we get rid of it, but I'm definitely advocating that we improve it so it's what we really envisioned. But we also spoke with a former special agent in charge of an air marshal field office who believes when put in context with the thousands of marshals the agency has, the numbers are still relatively small. You'd hope to have a 0% error rate, particularly when employees are carrying weapons, that former official told us. But you employ human beings, and humans are going to have failures. The TSA responded to the CNN report with their own statement, saying reports of misconduct are, quote, taken seriously and fully investigated, adding that they take swift disciplinary action in the wake of any misconduct. I'm Chris Welch reporting. All right, well, straight ahead, dirty dining, serving up a cornucopia of cockroaches with a side of curry in this week's Dirty Dining. I'm meteorologist Gina Cancellari, and your headlines for Sunday, a light northerly breeze bringing down some cooler air and some passing clouds as well. These clouds will not bring us rain, but there is rain in the forecast. I will show that to you in your seven-day planner. All ahead. All right, well, numerous problems look at, oh my gosh, like I, it's painful to just look at for drivers trying to get through the Colorado mountains yesterday. Significant snowfall forced the closure of a busy interstate there. And among those issues plaguing drivers, a 20 vehicle crash involving a tanker truck carrying hazardous materials. Oh, no. Luckily, no serious injuries were reported there. You remember those days driving through that? Yeah. Did you those, have that in Maryland? Um, not, not that bad. Oh. I mean, it would, it would snow in the winter, but I yes. do like, it's, it, Seeing that, it makes us grateful to be where, <laughs> I know. where we are in Vegas. We yeah. have a great day today, weather-wise. Really nice if you're sticking around and you're not leaving us on but, this yeah. very busy travel and day. If, and if you do like snow, and maybe in the mountains later in the week, right? That's true. Look at him stealing my thunder, stealing my snow. 
<laughs> All right, here it is a live look outside right now from our Valley View camera. We do have some clouds around. The clouds are sticking around throughout the day today and most likely through the week. I don't think we're going to have a crystal clear sky uh, in the foreseeable future, and I will show you why. Here's a look uh, at the current temperature 50 degrees right now, a wind at nine miles per hour out of the north. So it makes it feel a little cooler outside today than it was yesterday, and it'll stick around today. High temperature barely reaching 60 degrees around 2 33 o'clock with the clouds hanging around. Here's your planner for the day. 9 a.m. 49 degrees. We're getting into the mid 50s as we head into noon. Then temperatures will start to drop as we head into the evening. 56 degrees expected around 6 p.m. Here's a look at the future cast and it shows clouds hanging around as we head through our Sunday. These clouds are benign. They carry no wet weather with them. They will move in and out as we head through the next couple of days, Sunday, Monday, and here's a look at Tuesday. As we move into Wednesday, they will thicken up and become a little more serious. Will they bring us wet weather on Wednesday? This computer model says yes. I tend to think the rain will happen on Thursday. And here you can see far off to the north, mountain snow is expected with this next storm moving through the valley. This is still Wednesday that we're looking at here, although I think most of the wet weather for the valley is going to happen on Thursday. Here we are Thursday morning, rain is starting to push through. Heavy at times, it will be scattered around throughout the day on Thursday, mountain snow likely as well on Thursday. Here we are Thursday night. The rain continues to push through. This storm has enough juice. It has enough power. It has enough dynamics to give us the wet weather we haven't seen in quite some time. Then as we move into Friday, the clouds are still sticking around Friday and Saturday. What you don't see on this map is that we will have cooler weather Friday and Saturday thanks to that storm that's going to blow through here on Thursday. So here's the map that shows you temperatures, clouds, everything you need to know right here for your Sunday. It is cooler today than yesterday. Yesterday we were in the mid 60s. Today we are barely reaching 60 degrees with that cool northerly breeze. As we move into Monday and Tuesday, the clouds stick around and we do warm up as we head into Wednesday and it will become breezy by Wednesday evening. Mountain snow, valley rain and wind expected on Thursday. That should clear out by Friday, but I think the clouds are still hanging around for Friday and Saturday and it will be cooler once that system moves through on Thursday, cooling us down Friday and Saturday into the 50s. Tom? Mountain snow. Gina's calling it right now. Thanks, Gina. Well, Thanksgiving is over and it's not just your kitchen that looks like a disaster right now. In this week's Dirty Dining, Darcy Spears takes you to a place with a cornucopia of cockroaches. Those aren't the kind of jingle bells any restaurant owner wants to hear, especially when it's followed by this. I'm Darcy Spears from Channel 13. We're here because you guys are on Dirty Dining this week. O Curry on Stewart and Nellis was shut down November 8th for an imminent health hazard, a multi-generational cockroach infestation. When they moved up behind the heater area, mm -hmm. or the heater area, they see the, like uh, five, six roaches. They called it a swarm of cockroaches. I don't know. I mean, it's, not, it, it's already taking care of next day. O'Curry was back to a zero demerit A grade on November 10th after deep cleaning and... Oh, I see you have your action plan yeah, to keep the restaurant all. clean. Yeah, yeah. Something the health district required as a condition of reopening. Because this is a seven-page health report. Oh, okay. There are a lot of violations in here and okay. a lot of them document okay. dirty, greasy conditions in the kitchen that contributed uh, to the cockroach infestation. Okay, so in your report say report, but uh, yeah. as I say, we solve, solve the problem. The inspector saw a roach on a rolling cart used for storing clean kitchen wares. When the cart was pulled out, a swarm of roaches dispersed under the three compartment sink, prep sink, rubber floor mats, and behind the ice machine. Yeah, the next spray was uh, planned to come to next day. You were going to have pest gonna... control coming the following day? Yeah, because I was originally planned to come every month. <laughs> so like and the health right? district came the day before your <laughs> pest control <laughs> service? But still, you know, roaches there. There because... shouldn't be roaches there anyway. Yeah, Kitchen walls at O Curry were dirty with particles of dead bugs, heavy spillage of old food debris and grease. The restaurant's pest control records from June, July and October show American and German cockroaches and conditions that allow harboring and feeding of pests. The technician told the health inspector he recommended multiple times that the restaurant be fogged. So he'll help me a lot. I really appreciate him. 
The inspector also noted multiple food safety violations involving raw chicken. An employee breaded raw chicken with bare hands, then handled rice without washing hands. The employee also wore the same gloves to handle raw chicken, then clean kitchen wares, and the same wiping cloth was used to wipe raw chicken off a prep table and then used on refrigerator handles and doors. Again, you need to do my best and uh, this time it's happening. And there were also both Bulk packages of flour, rice, sugar, and other seasonings stored open and subject to contamination. There was mold in the ice machine and excessive amounts of old food debris and heavy grease buildup on equipment and surfaces throughout the kitchen. But we need to clean and we have a this we've been cleaning, but at that time when she was here, it's not, you know, according to report, that's what happened. There were two other imminent health hazard closures for pest infestations, roaches at a Roberto's taco shop and mice at Dolce Vita Gelato. Also, repeat offender China One got a 38 demerit C grade, and when you see the pictures, you'll understand why. We've got those images and the specific restaurant locations on our website at KTNV.com. Darcy Spears, 13 Action News. Thanks, Darcy. Well, we will be right back with a final check of your first alert forecast. You're watching 13 Action News, where you get breaking news fast and first. Stay with us. Great way to move through Sunday. Check this out. Some clouds will be around today. Cooler breeze for you today as well. Current temperature 50 degrees. We will top off the day barely reaching 60 degrees again with those clouds around and then we will warm up as we head into Wednesday only to have a storm approach for Thursday. This storm will bring valley rain wind and mountain snow and that is happening I repeat on Thursday. It will cool us down for Friday and cool us down for Saturday. But in the meantime, if you can get outside today, I would do it. It's a nice day, a nice cool breeze out there, uh, a little cooler than yesterday. Yeah, good day for hiking. Nice yeah, to see the great day to be outside. And it's nice to see the mountain snow. I like going up to see the snow, enjoy it and come back down and not yes. have to deal with it. It's yes, me nice. too. So get out and enjoy it while you can. All right, well, thanks for making this part of your day. We're always on at KTNV.com, the KTNV mobile app. Thanks for watching everyone.